Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise God, this is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. We're going to start with this week with a teaching that I think you're going to find really exciting and interesting, uh, and that is that you have a destiny in God. Hallelujah. He's got a plan for your life, and you have a destiny. Now, this message uh, was something that I ministered at Faith and Victory Church in Greensboro, North Carolina, uh, the church that I attend, Pastor Ed Taylor. And Pastor Ed was in Tulsa at Rama, praise the Lord, taking a uh, a well-deserved refueling trip <laughs> to go down to camp meeting and get into the Word of God with his family. And I tell you, I'm all for that. But, uh, of course, when he's gone, he sometimes gives me an opportunity to minister at the church, and so I had that opportunity. And this video that I'm about to begin to show you it's going to be broken up into several segments over the uh, the netcast uh, is the result of my teaching there at Faith and Victory Church. So uh, I do want to mention that the audio is a little unique. We had a little problem with the audio that morning uh, when I taught it, and so kind of kind of bear with me on that. I apologize in advance, but the message is so important. I wanted to get it to you. And so that's why I felt like it was important to share this message with you. Now, I also want to mention that the SpeakFaith.tv project is just going great guns. I am so excited about what's going on with SpeakFaith.tv. We have several thousand households connected via SpeakFaith.tv through the Roku box. And if you would like to uh, participate in that, then I encourage you to go to our website, wfm.org. I'll put up the uh, URL here, wfm.org. Go to that website. Look down in the lower right-hand corner, and you will see a red banner. If you click on that banner, you will have the opportunity to purchase a Roku box. Uh, very, it's a, it's a great deal. Uh, you know, They range from $49 on up, depending on the... Uh, features and so forth that you want to get, but uh, I encourage you to check into that and then go ahead and go to the Roku channel store and look for speakfaith.tv, connect to that, and you'll be good to go to see the videos from Faith and Victory Church and from Word of Faith Ministries, this ministry, hallelujah. So I am excited and we've got some great things coming down the pike with speakfaith.tv. Whew, it's just going to be a, an exciting uh, next few months and years as we have the uncompromising word of faith message via speakfaith.tv. Praise the Lord. So stay with us and let's go into our message now as it was recorded at Faith and Victory Church. We'll go ahead and get started here. Let's go to Job chapter 32. Job chapter 32. Good old Job. All right, one person told me one time, the book of Job. <laughs> Maybe he figured he needed a job. He was going to go look in the book of Job. No, it is Job. Job is actually the oldest book in the Bible. I don't know if you're aware of that. It was actually written before the first five books of the Bible called the Pentateuch. And uh, it chronicles the story of Job who had a covenant with God personally, directly, individually, before the Abrahamic covenant, obviously before the New covenant. Uh, so it talks about his story, and there's a lot of information in there. The big thing you got to remember about Job is, is that God knew Job what happened to Job. It was the devil, okay? And uh, once you understand that, it all kind of falls into place. You know, and, and this is something that I'm amazed about Christians anyway. I'm not talking about us. We know better. But Christians out there, I talked to a guy at work. I was telling Blood on the way in today. I talked to a guy at work, and he was raised Baptist, just like I was raised Baptist, you know. And he grew up in church, and he goes to church, you know, quasi-regularly. You know, not too regularly, but quasi-regularly. And he and I were talking about uh, issues concerning death and 
you know, uh, that when you die, your absent body, you're present with the Lord. He was here. Yes, amen. That's right. And then I said, and then, of course, one day you're buried and, and you're in the ground, but your body will be raised up and go on to be with the Lord, you know, and, and you will have a new body. And he looked at me like, what? And I said, yeah, you know, your body will be raised. He said, well, what about all the people that are in the ocean that got eaten by sharks? I said, what about them? He said, you telling me that all their body parts are going to come back together? I said, dude, we're talking about God. I mean, this is the guy that, that split the Red Sea. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, but what about the people that are cremated? I said, have you ever seen Star Trek? You know, they they take them apart, they put them back together. I mean, if man can conceive of that, then why would you think God could take all those parts and put them back together supernaturally? He looked at me like, you are out of your mind. He said, you believe some very strange things. And I thought, you know, the Bible teaches this. Why, why don't you understand this? But, see, that is the state, unfortunately, that a lot of Christians are in these days is they don't read the Bible. They don't study the Bible and they don't understand what it says. And it's it's written, you know what? It's written in English. <laughs> it may be King James English in some Bibles, you know, that you may have to kind of figure out the withers and the feathers and all that, but it's still English and you can figure it out. And besides, we got the Holy Ghost, the teacher of the church. Praise the Lord. He can reveal to us supernaturally what we need to know. But anyway, I was just amazed. And I was headed somewhere with that. Let's see. <laughs> I was talking about the fact that we were we were talking about uh, supernatural things, spiritual things, and um, oh, Job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And people get confused about Job. I knew it'd come. People get confused about Job because they think God did it to him. Well, no, the devil did it to him, and then he got back everything that he lost plus more. So he ended up okay. You know, don't worry about Job. He ended up fine. So, praise the Lord. There, there's a lot of information in the book of Job. This particular verse of Scripture, 32 verse 8, says, There is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth him under, giveth them understanding. Now, as usual, I like to take it apart in, in the Hebrew or the Greek or the original language, in this case Hebrew, and find out what it's really saying to us. There is a spirit in man. The word spirit here is rosh in the Hebrew, which is kind of hard to say, but I'm not going to go try it again. I'll leave it alone. But it means wind or breath. Now, the wind or the breath is really, you remember when uh, the, the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis that God breathed the breath of life into Adam? And I like what Brother Kenneth Copeland, the way he describes it, he says, if you know, Think of it this way. God created this body out of the dust of the earth, and he had a body there, and that body was just a chunk of flesh. You know, kind of look at it as, as kind of a big mannequin-looking thing. He picks it up, and since it was a, an exact duplication of him physically, because, you know, it was made in his image after his likeness, and if you look at the Hebrew, it means almost like a Xerox copy. I mean, he was the same height and all those good things. So he picked him up by the shoulders, held him up, and breathed, mouth to mouth, breathed into him the breath of life. And when he breathed into him the breath of life, he became a living soul, it says. All right, so in other words, that breath is what gave that chunk of meat life. All right, it says there's a spirit in man. The word spirit there is wind or breath. So the very meaning of the spirit is wind or breath. Now, here's what's interesting. And the inspiration, the word inspiration is neshama in the Hebrew. It means a puff of wind. Isn't that good? A puff of wind, which is also translated divine inspiration or the intellect. Divine inspiration or the intellect. In other words, when you think, you know, you're sitting here today, you may be thinking about lunch. I don't know. You know, hopefully you're thinking about the Word of God. <laughs> but at any rate, you, whatever you're thinking about, whatever's going on in your mind, you understand that you are thinking. It's your thoughts. Well, that thought process is occurring as intellect or as an area of the spirit. Now, you are a spirit. You have a soul, mind, will, and emotions. You live in a physical body. 
We know that from previous studies we've done. Well, there it's, and we also know this, that the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, says it is very hard to distinguish or separate the difference between the soul and the spirit. However, it can be done because it says the only thing that can do that is the Word of God. And the reason that I think he puts it that way is you have to study the Word of God to know what is spirit and what is mind. What is spirit and what is soul. Now, see, we say soul. But when we say soul, we don't often realize there's three aspects to soul. Soul itself is a triune thing, which is the mind, the will, and the emotions. If you understand, and it's, this is one to chew on. Take this one home, chew on it. If you understand that your mind, your will, and your emotions within your soul are different aspects, different things, that'll help you. See, your emotion, where you cry and you, oh, you grieve and you're upset, that's emotion. That's happening in your soul. That's not happening in your spirit. Your spirit is looking at you going, what in the world's wrong with you, boy? I don't understand this. Because your spirit doesn't, that's not the emotional part of you. Now, the part of you that gets, you know, <laughs> I order stuff from the Internet and I get boxes in the mail. And I open those boxes up and go, look at this cool thing. You know, it's usually some technical technology thing, you know. And I'll open it up. And and this is not unique with just me. It's, it's I think it's unique to all geeks, maybe. I don't know. But geeks like opening these boxes up so much. They have whole video shows on the Internet, on YouTube, about the unboxing. Well, I'm going to unbox my phone. I'm going to unbox my tablet. And they'll show people. I'm unboxing it. You know, why? Because they're excited about their new toy. Well, that's okay. But where's that excitement happening? In the, in not the spirit, but in the soul. That's the emotions. You get excited because you're emotional about, woo, this is so fun. You know, that when you get excited at Christmas and open a present, that's because of emotion. Now, you know, I've opened presents at Christmas when I was a kid. And it was socks. And I opened it up and went, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I need those. I'm not excited about socks. Matter of fact, I came to the realization, this was a revelation for me, maybe it would be a revelation for you, I don't know. But I came to the revelation that black goes with everything. And so I only buy black socks. And actually, I don't even buy them. Belinda buys them. I don't buy them. But all of my socks are exactly the same color and exactly the same style. And that way, I don't have to figure out which ones go together. They all go together. You say, well, that's boring, Dr. Bill. Look, it's a sock. It doesn't beat, it doesn't flash, and it doesn't take batteries. Why in the world would I ever care? Know what I'm saying? So socks just don't do it for me. You know, maybe you get excited about socks. Maybe you have lots of weird socks. I don't know. But see, my whole sock revelation helped me so much to understand that they just keep my feet warm. That's what they're for, you know. Some people say, well, my phone is just to make phone calls. Well, then you don't have a cool phone. You need a cool phone. That's what they call them, smartphones, because they do fun things. I got to play with mine this week. I've had this thing for two years. I hadn't done the GPS part yet. And so I got—I was looking for a particular location, and I pushed some buttons, and it said, turn right at the next intersection. And I'm like, my phone is telling me where to go. This is cool. you know. Now, you might say, well, yeah, I've done that all the time. But I didn't really think about it until I was kind of stuck and thought, Am I at the right place? Oh, I know. So I punched it in. I went to the browser. I found the location of where I was supposed to be. I hit the button. I told it to use the GPS, and it's first telling me where to go. Turns out I had left where I was supposed to be, driven off, and had to turn around and go back where I was. I was in the right place. But it was fun, <laughs> you know, because I got to play with my phone. I should have just stayed where I was. I would have was fine. But anyway, so, but I got there, and, and I got to go to the meeting I was going to and, and got to see Batman, so hallelujah. It was one of those things where they, they talk to you about work stuff and then they say, oh, by the way, we're going to show you this movie and it was Batman. So, I had fun. So anyway, and it was free too. 
See, that was the cool thing. So I had fun with my phone, and I have fun with my electronics, but all of that's emotion. All that has to do with just the emotional area. Well, you are a spirit being, first of all. That spirit being has a spiritual body that you can't see, but he's in here. Now, this physical flesh is just a shell. It's just a, an earth suit. It's a house. And the Bible actually calls it a tent. A tent represents a, a temporary dwelling. You don't normally live in a tent. You set up a tent, you camp, you take it down. Well, that's exactly the way our physical body is. It's a tent. We set it up when we're born. We live in it a while, a very brief while, and then we take it down. Well, now, let me ask you this, and this is part of what Keith Moore was saying this morning. He said when you, when you take your tent down, do you cease to exist? No, you just go somewhere else and live in a, a home or a house or whatever. When you're using the tent, you're just in the tent. When you take it down, it's not a tragic, terrible thing. You just took your tent down, and you went to another location. He, he gave the example, not like this, he gave the example of, uh, he said, I preached Friday night. I was wearing a different suit then. I had to take that suit off and put this suit on. Now I'm in this suit. And he held his suit. He said, that was not a tragic thing. I just changed clothes. Do you get upset when you change clothes? No. And so that was his point. You know, all we're doing is changing clothes. We're going to put on a, a heavenly body. You know, this earthly body, okay, that's fine, but we got the heavenly body to look forward to. Well, same kind of thing. We're in this physical body, but it's just a, it's a dwelling place. Then we are a spirit, we live in that body, but we have, meaning we possess, meaning it's our possession, a mind that we think with, that's the intellect, will, which we make decisions with, and emotions, which we emote with. We have fun, or we get sad, or whatever. All of those emotions are just a part of the soulish realm. Now, remember that I said this. We have a soul. We are not a soul. We have one. We are a spirit. See, and that's the difference between spirit and soul that a lot of people miss. First of all, you have to realize you are a spirit. You have a soul. Now, the reason I like to put it that way is very simple, because a lot of people think they are what they're thinking. You are not what you're thinking. What you're thinking is what your possession is doing. Take a computer, and I'll use my phone as an example because it's a computer, believe me. But uh, this is a more powerful computer than what they sent people to the moon with back in the 60s. I mean, can you imagine that? That's just amazing. But anyway, it's a computer. This thing can do all kinds of calculations. But there's nothing really unique about this in terms of, 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 of its me. This is me. No, it's not me. This is my phone. If I were to put it down and buy another phone, that would be my phone. There's nothing to tie me to this phone other than it's just my possession is my point. See what I'm saying? Same thing with your soulish realm. That's why people shouldn't let their emotions drive them. You shouldn't let your um, intellect drive you. You see what I'm saying? There are a lot of people, and, and, and you gotta, kind of got to be careful here the way you say this, but it's true. There are a lot of people that are so intellect-driven, they refuse to believe in spiritual things because I'm too smart for that. Well, that's dumb. I'm sorry. You think you're being so smart, but what you're doing is you're denying the real you. You are a spirit. Your spirit is spiritual. Okay? That's the real thing. The mind and the will and the emotions, that's just your possession. That's just, that's just a phone. You use it. You deal with it. You operate with it. You think with it. You calculate with it. Now, personally... My math processor is not as good as other people's math processors. I'm talking about me. You know, 2 plus 2, I've got. Okay, that's 4. But if I go much beyond that, I have to pull up a calculator 
because my math coprocessor is just not as enhanced as other folks' math coprocessors. Now, that doesn't mean that my computer is bad. I have a phenomenal ability to remember and deal with technological facts to the point that I can run computers and people go, what in the world? How do you know that? How can you possibly remember all that? Well, you know, my computer has the ability to retain all that information, my intellect. That's fine. That's just my gift, you might say. But the math coprocessor is not one of those things. <laughs> okay? So you see what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of you going, I'm not sure. You know, uh, it's all computer stuff. Well, hey, I talk to computers. But most of us have enough relationship with a computer that we can kind of understand these things. But the thing is, this is a tool. Your mind is a tool. Don't be driven by your mind. Don't be driven by your emotions. Be driven by your spirit. That's the key. Now, said all that to say this. There is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. The word understanding is fascinating to me, and that is the Hebrew word bene, from which we get the word benediction. I always wonder where that word benediction came from. Well, bene is the root of that, understanding, to separate mentally, to distinguish, or to understand. In other words, to separate mentally, you know, I'm trying to think of a good example for this. When you deal with certain things, you have to categorize them. You have to put them in certain boxes, mentally, if you will. To separate mentally means I can sort through what's important, what's not important, what I need to deal with now, what I can put off to later. You see what I'm saying? Prioritizing. Okay? To distinguish. So how do I deal with certain things? How do I, what do I do with this? And then to understand. Well, that means a depth of comprehension and understanding. So we take all of that, we put it back into the verse. There is a spirit man. You are a spirit. The inspiration of God, the Almighty, gives us understanding, the ability to distinguish, and the ability to separate mentally. Now, I said all that again to say this, and that is, there's a lot of people that have problems distinguishing the truth, understanding things, and separating things and prioritizing things. And the reason is, they don't have any inspiration from the Almighty. They don't have any puff of wind See, just because God breathed life in you one time doesn't mean he's through. Selah. <laughs> Amen. Just because he breathed the breath of life into you doesn't mean he's through puffing. Okay? It's a puff of wind. It's divine inspiration. It is what gives you insights. We call it revelation knowledge. And that's what I want to talk to you about. Matter of fact, I hadn't given you the title yet. And I always like to do that. The title for this today is, God has a destiny for you. God has a destiny for you. And you say, well, Dr. Dahl, how, how do you get there from here? <laughs> we'll get there. Let's go to uh, Zechariah 12.1. The burden of the word of the Lord of Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens, and layeth the foundation of the earth, and formeth the spirit of man within him. It says, God forms the spirit of man within him. Now, what's interesting about that is this. The Hebrew word for um, formeth is yaltzar, meaning squeezing into shape to mold into a form as a potter. Now, see, get a mental image of that, a potter shaping clay, that process. A potter can take a lump of clay that has no form to it whatsoever, throw it on the wheel, plop, spin that wheel, and start using his fingers to mold, and that thing will turn into a beautiful pot. And I have done some, you know, pottery like that, and it is, first of all, it's harder than it looks. <laughs> but once you get it down where you're working with it, it's amazing to feel that sensation of that clay conforming to your decisions 
of how you want that pot to look. And you shape that pot the way you want it to look. You as the potter are in charge of making sure the shape comes out the way you want it. And if it doesn't, you squish it back together, you start over, and you, you make the pot look like you want it. That's the whole purpose. Well, that's what it's saying here is, the Lord formeth the spirit of a man within him. Now, part of the meaning of this, part of the meaning of this potter is to determine. That's the purpose. The reason the potter makes the pot the way he makes it is it is a determined plan. Now, this is what I want us to see about God and our spirit. Remember, you are a spirit. You have a mind, will, and emotion. You live in this, this earth suit, but you are a spirit. The real you was formed by God. The real you was shaped by God and given a determined shape. We look at it this way. He gave you a destiny. He gave you a determined shape for your life. See, and I believe this. I, I believe in destiny. Now, not weird, okay? You know, like, no matter what you do, you're going to either be born again or not. You know, I'm not talking about that, okay? I'm talking about for your life, there's a plan. And if you hook into the plan, you'll be much happier than if you didn't hook into the plan. Now, if you have a destiny, and God is shaping you in that direction, and you rebel against that and turn from that, you're not going to have a lot of fun in life. Okay? But you are a free moral agent, and you can make decisions, and if you don't receive Jesus as your Lord, you really won't have a lot of fun, either in this life or the next, especially in the next. Um, well, praise God, I trust you enjoyed our beginning this message. We're going to be continuing it over the next few netcasts, so stay tuned for that. And then also remember that we are on Word of Faith Radio, uh, Monday through Friday, and that is at 11.30, right after Kenneth Copeland, who comes on at 11 o'clock, that's Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. And uh, then also, we're on with the audio from this netcast, we're on Sunday mornings on WFR at um, 9.30, also right after Kenneth Copeland comes on at 9 o'clock. So, praise the Lord. Join us on WFR.org. I'll put that up right here so that you can see uh, where to get the Word of Faith radio feed. Tell you what, good things are happening with Word of Faith radio. Hallelujah. Now, I'd love for you to write me here at Word of Faith Ministries, our address, Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina, the zip code 27262. And, of course, as always, you can write me a little quicker to write me via email, and that is Dr. Bill, D-R-B-I-L-L, -L, at W-O-F-M dot O-R-G. Join us again next time. Remember, until then, to fulfill the Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.